I want to talk with, about the Nairobi Stock Exchange as a start, and then I'll get to something Uganda is saying, which is interesting, which is the NSE 20 share index still picking up 0.8% last week. Should we be looking at 4,200 as a new target? Well, I repeat, um, our, our, our local investors tend to come in late late in the game, and yes. I, I'm expecting to start seeing them getting very very active right now. I, I think Safaricom also has a lot to do with uh, what, what we are seeing going or we're expecting going forward. I mean, uh, they've done very well. I'm, I, I think it's, it's kudos uh, to them putting their foot down, especially on the tariff war and, you know, coming out with the great results and, you know, standing their ground. And so I think uh, that Safaricom has a lot to do with confidence in our market. And so anytime Safaricom does badly, our market will tend to yes. suffer because um, even the indexes are skewed to an extent because of Safaricom's sheer you know, magnitude. So I think uh, that we should be seeing a, con a continuous rise. I think investors will now begin to feel that uh, that has begun to give them value. But again, uh, we must be aware that it, once Safaricom hits the five shilling mark, we saw it trading at around four shillings and 80 cents, yes. means that we might see some level of exit as well, because a lot of investors have been waiting for Safaricom. Because that was the listing yeah. price and it has not been yes. there in a long time. So you're saying it's likely one that Safaricom might hit five shillings, the listing price. Um, yes. And then when it gets over that, a lot of people would say, OK, we're done here. Yeah. And uh, that, that is what we'll be watching for and trying to figure out which way the market will move if it does get to that point. Do you think that might happen this week? That's well, it's a possibility. I mean, four shillings and 80 cents, that's, there's not much room now. I mean, 20 yes. cents is not a very big change. And so. And this is like, largely by domestic investors? Well, uh, we have been seeing a lot of buying, and I think that was most probably uh, the, the foreign investors. Mm -hmm. And once it gets to the five shilling point, I think a lot of the domestic investors will also start to take some action. And so we, we can see a lot of activity on that, uh, that counter. All right, let's move on to the listed coffee maker, EGADS, which um, had a bonus share, and then it, it, the, its profit took a bit of a, a tumble, and the, the share is also appearing to be uh, taking a tumble as well. What's happening on EGADS? Um, companies in Kenya have uh, a sort of, you know, there's a catch-22 because yes. Kenyan investors are very dividend-oriented. So companies, to protect their share price, they have to give a dividend. On the other side, they need to use the bonuses um, in as much as they are a form of dividend. Um, you'll find that companies will use them to, re, you know, release some of their funds. So they give out the, the the bonus to try and release some funds because they need to invest. I'm yes. sure we've heard about the real estate and all that stuff they're doing. Mm -hmm. And then they give a dividend. And a one for one means that they have double the number of shares that they had when they went, to, they did the bonus, meaning that, um, you know, shareholders have a choice of either selling that stock, that share, uh, and, you know, paying themselves a dividend or holding on to it and hoping that EGADS will, you know, give them more value going forward. So I think it's more the deletion factor um, and also the fact that uh, I think there's also been not much information coming out on the Tattoo City issue, yes. which I was uh, I was expecting to hear more about, and which I think would be a factor in wha what investors would do going forward. Would they sell heavily, or would they hold and wait to? you know, to be part of the Tattoo City story. This other stock, which is also dropping right now, was very predictable. Kenya Airways, after that uh, uh, a few billion shillings loss, everybody expected the share to take, to take a, a beating. But how much more can it take a beating? Well, um, that's a tough call. Um, they have had quite a bit. In, they've been in the news quite a bit. All of it, mostly uh, negative a, news. A lot of negative news, yes. and that doesn't augur well for Kenya, Kenya Airways. I think... Uh, and they're very, it's a very cyclical company. It's a very cyclical stock and airlines usually, you know, they have, it's a very capital intensive, it's a balancing act mm -hmm. really to run these things. And so uh, investors will of course be very skeptical and very careful about investing in an airline. But they need to really be watch and see which way to expect. And so I think uh, Kenya Airways is one of those ones where you can make a killing, which they did a few years ago, yeah. or uh, can really suffer when you have a lot of negative sentiment. So I think it's up to the Kenya Airways um, management to try and start bringing in some positive you know, information for the market to digest and probably shore up their price. But that said, it could take... Uh, 
more of a beating, especially with those numbers. One of the top stories this morning is that Uganda is a bit concerned that with an election coming up in Kenya, and Uganda is a landlocked country, if we have violence like we did after the 2007 election, they might be in a bit of a tricky situation. We're having so much political news dominating the headlines here today because people are talking about alliances between the presidential candidates. Is this a real concern for other investors, not just our neighbors who are landlocked like Uganda and Rwanda? Well, naturally, we, we, we expect that there'll be some sort of correction as we head towards elections. Mm -hmm. uh, personally, uh, you know, as an investor, I, I would wait for the correction to get into the market True. because yes. we are seeing very high highs right now. And that means, you know, there should be a correction sometime and that would be a good time to get in. But then uh, that said, I think um, I don't feel, I feel with the new constitutional dispensation, Kenyans are speaking out more is more you know we are more once beaten twice shy we yes. are more aware of that fact that you know it, it's a possibility and uh, that feeling makes me less um, you know I, I don't expect us to go into that violent phase again but what i think is that we're going to see investors take a back seat <clears throat> just you know putting their funds in more defensive areas yes. rather than holding what could really suffer if we did have any issues but even if you look at the 2007 election you'll find that regardless of the results immediately after the elections we did have the market spike yes and uh, then the credit crunch crisis hit and that is what actually hit our market really hard. Now, most people tend to say it was the post-election violence, right. but it was more the credit crunch crisis, and most of those, uh, those funds who hold you know, huge chunks in our market pulling out their funds to sort out whatever their problems were in back home. Back home. So I don't think it is the post-election violence that was the cause. I don't think that it is a post-election violence or the possibility of post-election violence that's, that would really hurt our market, more the sense of more political risk. So at that point, it was purely coincidental? I, it was coincidental. All right, we'll leave it there. Samuel Asante Sana. Samuel Gishore here with us, research analyst at NIC Securities.